What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello once again, Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage Mechanics. Today we're doing a little sidestep here. I'm unboxing a old bagged kit that I had for a long, long time. This is the AMT Earl 1997 Pontiac Firebird Trans Am. Now I got this kit originally, I was supposed to be selling this, but there's some issues with it, which we'll get into in this video. Anyway, this model kit came from when I bought Monster Hobbies way, way back when it used to be called Johnny's Hobbies. That's a long time ago, right around 2004. So I've had this a long time, but this was one that failed our inspection, as we'll find out. So let's go down to the bench and take a look at this model car kit, because it's pretty much 90% there. Anyway, let's go do that. Now we're going all the way back down to the 1997 Pontiac showroom. And unfortunately I do not have the box for this, but what I do have is the model in a bag. So I guess there's not too much boxy kind of things I can do. So let's just open this right up right here right now. Now I got this model kit a long time ago. There's our instructions. Danny will take a look at it. I got this model a long time ago when I got my hobby store originally. The previous owner used to sell these models in bags. So this is one of those kind of affairs. Again, you can see all the cool parts on here though. There, I think, I hope everything's still in here. I do believe that the tires are missing, but that's the only thing. Other than that, it's a complete kit and looks good. That's why I figured I should be reviewing this one. Uh, sadly, the glass was never put in a bag. That's gonna be all nice and scratchy. And I hope that back window is in there too. I don't think that it is actually. Well, that's not a good sign. <laughs> anyway, oh yeah, I don't see it at all. But uh, there's all our plastic components. And then I got the decal sheet here, which Danny the dog will show you in a minute. So let's go down and take a look at these plastic components. Hey everybody, this is Danny the Dog, your dog on the street again, and here we are to review the AMT Ertl 1997 Pontiac Firebird Trans Am. So, taking a look at this, we got some pretty cool instructions so far. We got that nice three-quarter shot of the car, an artist illustration. And then down where my nose is right here, we also have the write-up and the history of the car, which Trevor will put in the comment section down below. Actually, the video description. So, let's open this thing up and take a look at each of the building steps. Step one is the before you begin section. And this is where you learn about how to put your model together. And it's got some great tips, like carefully study and understand the entire instruction sheet. And then here it's also got test fitting parts and so on and so forth, as well as advanced techniques like using primer and sandpapers to get a perfectly smooth paint finish. Panel two shows you a color availability chart and the car had such colors as bright white, blue green chameleon, red orange metallic, and here's the interior colors as well. And it does say you could use automotive touch-up paint to get the right colors. So now that we know the paint for the model kit for the car body, we can get right away into building this engine. So here we have the intake manifold, the left and right hand side cylinder heads, the left and right hand side engine and transmission, the oil pan and the front timing chain cover. And it does mark out where the radiator hoses will go in later steps, just so you know ahead of time. Step B shows our valve covers going on the engine, as well as the starter and our air conditioner compressor pump and the alternator, as well as all these belts and pulleys. Step C shows our air intake hose being glued to the top of the engine with the injection plenum there, and then the throttle linkage cover and our left and right hand side manifolds. Step four is our chassis assembly, and we can see there's a lot going on for this kit. So you have two lower control arms, you've got your front stabilizer bar, your front suspension mount and engine mount, as well as the rack and pinion steering unit. Now here it shows the front stabilizer bar location being put into that first hole. So again, that's really helpful. 
And then you go into panel B or step B here and we've got our rear stabilizer bar being glued to our differential lower half and then there's the drive shaft upper differential half which glues in here and then you cover that up with the differential cover in the back then you've got your disc brakes on both sides so again multiple piece suspension units which are really really nice in panel c we've got this wonderful chassis here and there's even a subframe up front which gets glued in there's a section here to remove out of the frame there's a transmission mount which ties these two together and the assembled front suspension will go in here as well and you get the lower fascia front mount and the radiator mount which also glues up to our subframe panel d is showing our exhaust system here which has three pieces muffler and tailpipes at the back, the exhaust system in the middle with the catalytic converter, and then an extension pipe to go to the other manifold on our engine, as this one would drop in as well. And then we glue our engine from the bottom up into the chassis. Over here in step E, we add our rear assembled differential into the chassis. First you put down your coil springs, then the rear differential. There's a pan hard rod which will glue somewhere in here, and I do believe that comes to the back of the differential. And then we also have a torque arm in here which glues to the side of the transmission, all the way to the rear differential right there on the side. Panel F shows the radiator going together with the outer and then the inner with the fans. And then there's those radiator hoses and you have to consult the front of the instruction sheet to look on that water pump as to where they go. And then we also have our firewall being mounted back here. Now in panel 6A we have the interior assembly. This is another one of those great kits with the separately mounted door panels and rear trunk panel. And there we also get the trunk floor panel and a windshield washer reservoir right here which glues up into the front of the car. Panel 5B is our interior assembly. So here we get a wonderful dashboard, steering column, steering wheel and foot pedals all separate. So again, really, really excellent work here. A shifter knob which drops in here. It's also got the boot attached. That's our center console. Then we've got our emergency brake going in there, the front bucket seats and the rear seat. All that glues in. Again, really excellent work here. Panel 6 shows our wheel assembly. So here we're using those Goodyear Eagles again. These are the directional tires, so they say it's very important to get that right. So when you put your wheels together, just keep an eye out for these arrows. They're supposed to be facing forward. Now the model that we have doesn't have the tires, but I think these are similar to the ones they're using in the Corvette kits. So we'll just add that footage at the end of this video so you see what the real thing would have looked like. So there we've got our rear wheel inners and you paint those aluminum, you push them through your tire and you mount your wheel into the front. And then in the back, you actually attach them to these uh, front spindles. Oh, the front. Uh, usually it would be like front up here, back down there. But anyway, here, uh, Trevor just moved this up since he's got his fingers there. Dogs don't have fingers. Very hard with paws, you know. Okay, so yeah, look at that. There's a McPherson strut right there and it would mount onto your wheel. Now in panel 7 we get into our final assemblies. So there's our car body, the rear deck, the rear fascia, and the front fascia. And all that would glue on and look really, really cool. Now we carry on with our assembly in panel 7. Interesting that this is also A, should really be a B, but uh, whatever. There's our battery and there's a decal for that. Our air filter box, which will glue inside there in the engine compartment. And there's the wheels going in with the McPherson struts. So you got to kind of balance them while you drop the body down. So I'll just move this over here. So you see panel D or B, sorry, says carefully press both rear wheel assemblies onto the rear axles. Note, it is very important to apply even pressure from both sides to avoid the possibility of breaking the axles. Be sure to notice tread direction during assembly. And there they have it right there. So let's just uh, continue to move this down here. So there's panel C, and we have our front windshield and the roof panel, as well as our right and left hand side mirror housings and chrome plated mirrors. There's that rear window, which sadly is not in this model. I don't know what Trevor's gonna do about that. Wait around for a round two to make a new one and say I need a new part. I don't know. Anyway, there's the brake booster and master cylinder. 
and the air intake hose. And then here again, we've got another one of these boxes and it says note, if gaps appear between the roof bar and the interior panel, carefully cement and press in place until the glue has set up. Have any of you experienced a problem with that? Let us know in the comments down below. Uh, so here, we'll just cram this into the back wall of our camera studio. We have panel D and that shows, first you put the decal in here and then your tail lights over the top. There's a license plate bracket which goes in first with a decal on there. And we get these nice chrome exhaust tips and decals for the rear side marker lights. And in panel E we have our hood. We also have decals for underneath in the engine bay area. In fact, all this is decals. So there's ones for the side, then turn signal lamps, ones for the uh, driving lights underneath. Again, really cool. So that takes care of the instructions. I'll see you when we do the decals. Thank you once again, Danny, for covering those instruction sheets. So here we have our Pontiac body and you can see all the nice underhood details in here. The air intake is molded up onto the top of the radiator housing for us. The lights are in the down position. Unfortunately, it would be nice to have them come up. And then look at all the holes in the back for the spoiler and whatnot. Very nicely done. Up on the sides, we get this wonderful door handle. There are some chew marks from where it came off the parts tree. There's a couple little tabs in here which help all line up those front and rear bumpers. And then look underneath, there's the little spots in here for our uh, shock absorbers. There are mold marks which you'll have to fill in or get rid of with that number 16 hobby blade. There's also the filler cap at the back. And then that's all open in the front and rear for the fascias to come in place. So let's just put this down and grab those parts and take a look at them. On this parts tree, we have the front and rear fascias right here and here. You can see the nice Pontiac lettering molded in there, as well as our steering wheel and our center console and something that was in here. <laughs> I don't know what that is. So the front end is actually loose here, but you can see the nice turn signal lights and the deep uh, driving lights down in there. It would be going this way on the car. So you get that nice hood nose in there. Now let's move that out of the way. Look at the back end. Again, that nice Pontiac logo and the uh, separation line in here for that back panel, as well as our side marker lamps. In the back, again, there's deep mold marks, but uh, there's barely any flash, so that's always good. Take a look at that nice steering wheel right there, as well as our center console. Looks just like the real Firebird. And I'm going to say this is a really, really good job on this model kit as far as the molding goes. On this part sprue, we get that wonderful chassis. Look at just how cool this thing is. Fuel tank in the back. I do believe this might be for the spare tire. I'm not too sure on that, but part of the trunk anyway. And then look at all that nice detail there. Nice and crisp, smooth. There's the rear muffler and one of the air intakes. I mean, look at how good that is. That's some excellent work on there. Again, really, really cool. There's, it's got carpet in here, molded in. Unfortunately, there's mold marks on this side, so that's one of those little kind of irritating bits. You can get rid of them with a number 16 hobby blade and then flock this. That would look good with some flocking on there just to cover up those marks. Again, nice detail on that air intake. Overall, I'll give this an A+. Next up we have our door panels and take a look at how cool these are. One nice thing about doing them flat like this is on these handles, they actually look like a real handle instead of just sort of like a half form lump of plastic. Again, you get the speakers in here and the nice paneling into the back. Very, very nice. Look at how great that is. Who could ask for anything more? Some mold marks again, get rid of them, but overall, like, Again, really excellent work. Now here's a parts tree with a lot going on. We've got disc brakes, we've got those McPherson struts up front, our pedals, our license plates, master cylinder, the rear springs, the differential cover and those A-arms, the wheel backs, and there's our rear axle as well as the braces and the differential. So just take a look at how nicely these parts are all molded. Again, really excellent work on there can't complain, can you? 
all these uh, different braces and bars as well. Again, really nice work. Mold marks, you're going to have to get rid of those just to smooth this up and get parts to fit together nicely. But overall, again, really excellent work on this model. Our next parts tree shows our engine as well as the exhaust system and our radiators right here and the air intake on the top. Almost forgot what this was for a second. Then we also have our belts and pulleys and our valve covers, oil pan and cylinder heads. So again, take a look at that detailing on there. Really nice, clean, crisp. It looks like the automatic transmissions of the day. Six speed manuals, I do believe they are. And then look at that, uh, look at the fans in there. Nice spider webs in there. Again, excellent detail on that radiator. Turning them over, there is some flash in here. But overall, I mean, look at how clean this molding is, eh? No flash anywhere. Just mold marks, mold marks. All you have to contend with are mold marks. But overall, excellent. Here we've got that back trunk panel. We also have our front frame. And then we've got our firewall here and the bottom part of the front fascia. And then bringing that up to the camera again. Look at the nice detailing on the firewall. You've got all your wires in there going to all the different locations. There's that front subframe again. Excellent with all the holes in the right location. Carpet on our trunk bottom and then flipping it over. Again, it's kind of funny. There's flash in some spots, but not much. I mean, you hardly even know it's flash when you're looking at it, but it is. But overall, again, AMT did a wonderful job on creating this car. And here we've got our seats, front, left, and right. It's even got the little guide for your seatbelt to come across and click in from the overhead position, of course. And then there's our rear seat, as well as these non-plated wheels. These are uh, optional. I, I don't know if they're custom or stock. You guys let me know in the comments down below. Probably custom because they're not painted, but anyway. And then there's our rear spoiler, which goes into the body of many holes. <laughs> So let's just take a look at those wheels. Again, they're really cool. They've got all the proper five bolt pattern, as well as a little center cap for your decal. And then on the back, we've got some old marks, some sink marks in the back of the seat. But we also have this netting back here for holding your magazines or whatever you're doing. And uh, But overall, again, really nice work. Look at the upholstery pattern on there. Excellent stuff. And here we have our dashboard with the CD player in there so you can listen to Black Hole Sun or maybe some Pearl Jam or something like that. And we also have our hood here and I like how these scoops go down into the front of the hood or indentations I guess. And we also have our stick right there and our front cross member. These are all the loose parts. There's our starter motor. This is one of the little things that goes underneath in the engine bay. And we have our right and left hand side mirror housings. Now on the mirror housings, I did notice there are some sink marks on the bottom, just there. So you're gonna have to fill those in and sand it all down. Overall, they're not bad. Just move that out of the way. Let's take a look at that dashboard. So there you've got your instruments molded in place and they're using that circular analog style again, much like the Corvettes did. And we've got our little heater vents out there, the adjustable ones as well as our heater down here and then the stereo in there. Or maybe that's the heater, I don't know. <laughs> Let me know in the comments if I got that right. And there's our airbag right there. Again, really nice work. Got that vent for the defroster. And then there's our hood and underneath we got that fireproof matting, but there are sink marks in it in all four corners. So again, just know that that's there and uh, get ready to fill it in with your filler. But again, I, I think that's mainly the main criticism here. Sink marks and uh, mold marks. But if you can get a grasp on those and get them all cleaned up, I believe that you can. This thing will look perfect. So here we have the chrome parts tree. And I do believe these wheels are the stock ones, although they could be custom. I'm not 100% sure. They might even be a different year for this Firebird. That's another possibility. 
Anyway, uh, if you know, let me or write it down in the comments below if these are the stock ones or if the other ones were the stock ones. At any rate, check these out. They are directional, so when you get those directional tires, you got to make sure that everything lines up so they're all rotating properly. There's those rear exhaust pipes, as well as the front timing cover and the top of the engine, the alternator, and the mirror insert. So let's just bring this up to the camera. Again, you can see how nice those wheels are. I'd probably use those on my car if I built this thing. But then if I want to be accurate to a 97, yeah, I'm going to have to look that up. I'm away from my computer right now, so if you guys want to Google that and put it in the comments, that would be most helpful. Overall, though, not much chrome, but what you get is really nice. And here we have our clear components, which consists of that rear tail lamp, as well as the front windshield and the roof. And unfortunately, right here was that rear window, but I don't have it for this one. So I guess this is why I can't really sell this model. It was a store one originally, but uh, there's no rear glass and there's no tires. But anyway, there's a lot of flash on the clear parts, which is awkward. Awkward! But uh, there's some scratches because this was never put in a bag. But, you know, let's look beyond all that. Look at that, you get the windshield wipers molded in the front glass. And then here, because it's that one piece, just like I think the 97 Corvette was, you don't have a gap up in here. So that's always really, really good. And then look at the detailing in those tail lamps. Again, really excellent stuff from our good friends at AMT Ertl. Here I am once again with the decal sheet for our 1997 Pontiac Firebird Trans Am. We got this lovely wingback license plate from Indiana, as well as these front signal lights, and then our Pontiac emblem right there, and some of the details for under the hood, as well as Pontiac script in here, Firebird I think it says, as well as the rear tail panel with the tail lights, and our side marker lights. So again, really cool decal sheet, not much in the way of like flames or side stripes or anything, but I like it. Here we've got our wonderful Goodyear Eagle tires. Now these ones are directional, so look for the little arrows along the side. You've got the raised lettering in here, which is really wonderful to paint up and very easy. You also have lower profile tires for the front and wider ones in the back. You can easily see that by just doing this, just to see you've got a little bit wider in the back. Also, the tread pattern is nice and directional, so make sure that you line it up so that all that is pointing forward. Well, I hope you enjoyed our look at our AMT Ertl 1997 Pontiac Firebird in this great unbagging video, because I don't have the box, so it's not an unboxing video. Anyway, if you want to get some model cars that are complete, sealed in boxes, and are excellent that we can ship all the way around the world, check out our website at www.monster-hobbies.ca. I will leave the link for our model car section in the description down below. So, once again, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Pound that notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you're the first one to see it. And speaking of videos, check out this one right here. I'm sure you're going to love it. It is a real gasser, man. And until next time, everyone, happy model building.